The first thing I want to ask you is, <coughs> here's what I don't understand looking into this. Why are there two types of pension? Why, depending on when you're born, you'll get 50 quid less than somebody who has joined the state pension in the last five years or so? I mean, I'm trying to learn Greek. I think that would be a lot easier than yeah. understanding how our pension system arises. I've got my own point of view, but that's for a lecture or <coughs> not this morning. It's not done viciously or meanly. Basically, when you enter, that changes it. When they upgrade the pension, it may not cover everybody. So that's that particular stat you've, you've seized. But at the end of the day, that's quite a small difference. Our basic problem is we have never, ever... Uh, we put enough money, obliged employers, obliged ourselves. Yes. That's the most important thing to save. And those savings actually are a form of investment that grow all the other European economies. But, of course, we mustn't learn anything from Europe now. <laughs> so, Jack, the older you um, will, will be becoming, I think your opinion on this may change, my friend, but why are you against not raising the pension pot? So, I think... In the UK at the moment, we have a demographic crisis, which is only getting worse. We know over the next 25 years, 25% of the population are going to be over 65. Currently, we're kind of rationing the fact that we can't really afford the current state pension system by continuing to kind of creep back the state pension age, which I think is grossly unfair because current working people who are paying for the state pension through taxation are not going to be seeing the same benefits that they're currently paying for. But also, if you're a richer pensioner, you're going to be getting a state handout for much longer than if you're a poorer pensioner, because life expectancy is much lower for poorer people than richer people. So by continuing to push back that age, it's grossly unfair. I think what we need to do is rather than um, kind of scrapping the state pension or um, reducing it, we need to be means testing it instead. Because currently, whether you're a rich pensioner or whether you're a pensioner who's struggling to heat your home and feed yourself, you're getting that same handout from the state. That is absolutely ridiculous. If we means tested the state pension and said we're only going to give it to uh, retirees with assets of less than a million pounds, it would save the government 25 billion a year. Now, you could put that money towards uh, cutting taxes or assisting working people, the people who are driving growth in the UK, and increasing the state pension for those pensioners who are in poverty, that 18% that you mentioned, who really need support from the government. So I think the current system, it doesn't work at all. It's unsustainable and it's grossly unfair. But I suppose, Dennis, the counter argument to that would be that would force a lot of people to sell their homes, um, which is you know, not an election winner. It's not a popular thing. And, and at the end of the day, these wealthy pensioners, they may be in a minority amongst pensioners, but they are an important and significant part of the vote, are they not? Liz, might I gently and politely uh, ask Jack, he's very, very strong, but it's a very powerful argument. How old are you, Jack? I'm 23. You're 33? 23. Th 23? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's, that's wonderful. You look really, really dynamic at that age. Let me tell you, as you get a bit older, you'll be paying taxes, a lot of taxes, because to rebuild this country after the last 10 years, everybody's going to have to pay more after the disaster of the Liberal Democrat and Tory economic ideology. And you'll find that you'll be very, very hard to persuade everybody older than you to pay a lot more so you can live in a better country. So I wouldn't actually means test pensioners because means tests are mean. That's why the word is there. Well, not quite. And they're deeply unpopular. And these are all guaranteed ways. I don't know which party you represent or what are close to of losing any election on that basis. Jack? Well, I, I don't represent any party. I'm simply looking at the current situation, looking at the fact that it's that it's unsustainable um, and, and unfair. And I think we are seeing taxes raised uh, to a record high. We are seeing downward pressure on growth. And we know that our, our current welfare spending, of which the state pension is a huge proportion, we need to be growing the economy at about 3% a year in order for that to be sustainable. And we're Jack, nowhere near that at the moment. Do, you say you don't represent any party, and, and absolutely fair enough, you don't have to answer this, but are any of the parties speaking to the young, the, the, the working population, as you say on this, or are they all very aware that the people who by and large, turn out to vote, are of the older years who stand to gain from the system as it is. 
with the triple lock? Well, I, I, I certainly don't think any of the major parties at the moment are, are speaking to the working age population on this issue. They're all committed to keeping the triple lock, which just doesn't feel fair when you have, you know, one in four pensioners are millionaires when you have working families having seen their average annual income fall by £375 a year since 2010, but pensioners have seen theirs increase by £510 a year. And when we see that nearly a third of children in this country are in poverty, whilst if you're a pensioner, you're much less likely to be in poverty than the average Brit. So we need to be focusing our efforts on those pensioners who are still in poverty. It's figures that aren't really relevant there, but what, what would well, you well, say? Well, very, very simply, Jack, you're quite right. There are huge discrepancies because we're the most unequal society. But I'd say America. try living in 156 yeah, quid a week, exactly. Jack. That's what and, I'd say. And, you know, pensioners... Well, 20%, that's one in five pensioners, don't finish the week with enough to pay for their food bills. They can't even dream of running a car, which if you're in the far in the countryside is a form almost of being trapped there. Uh, and you certainly can't go on holiday or buy presents for your grandchildren. Honestly, Jack, I mean, don't differentiate by saying every pensioner can afford to become even poorer. I agree with you entirely. Don't get me wrong. We've not dealt with care problems. We've not looked at much yeah. better examples in Europe. Uh, Germany, for example, there was a consensus in 1995 to tax everybody, rich and poor, 4% to pay exclusively for old age care. Now, I'd love to do the interview problems. again with you in 50 years' time, Jack. We've got to leave it there, my friend. Thank you.